In this video, I'm going to discuss and prove the rational root theorem. So for example, we have this uh, polynomial expression x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. And we want to factor this polynomial. Of course, we're going to use synthetic division where we're going to put the uh, polynomial uh, numerical coefficients 1, 2, 1, 2. And we usually do this in order to find the first root because there, if we are able to find the root, then that root is, uh, forms a factor x minus a, where a is the root. And our challenge is to find this the number inside the box, which is the root, so that we have a remainder of 0. Now, there are so many possible numbers to put here. Not just whole numbers, but it includes fractions and also negative numbers of those fractions and whole numbers. Uh, that means there are a bunch of numbers to guess and it takes uh, forever for you to find that number so that the remainder is zero. Now there is a theorem that can lessen the options uh, that uh, can be tested to that box. We call it a rational root theorem. So what is rational root theorem? Rational root theorem states that if a polynomial p of x has a rational root, r equals p over q, written in lowest terms, then p is a factor of the constant term, a sub o, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, a sub n. So that's why a theorem is a named rational root theorem because it forms a ratio. The root is a ratio. It's p over q. So let me show you an example of an expression, polynomial expression, and let's say we were going to find that root so that when we use synthetic division, the remainder is zero. As I said, there are infinitely many, num many possible numbers to use, but with the use of the rational root theorem, we can just pick uh, the, the root out of this leading coefficient and the constant term. So the constant term a sub o uh, has a factor. Uh, you call it p. So all the possible factors of 8, we have 2, 4, 8, and 1. Also the negative numbers of those. And also the q, uh, it's the factor of the leading coefficient, that is the 3. So the leading uh, term is x, x cubed, and the coefficient of this is 3. So the leading coefficient is 3. And all the factors of 3 is what you call the q. We term it as q, which are 1 and 3, or the negative 1 and negative 3. And so the roots, or the possible root that can make this a remainder of 0 if you use synthetic division, is p over q. That means it can be 8 over 3, it can be 4 over 1, 4 over 3, as long as it forms a p over q, where p is a factor of 8 and q is a factor of 3. And to understand that, we are going to show an example later. But before that, since this is a theorem, we need to prove this so that uh, we can use it, so that we can sure we can be sure that this is true to all uh, polynomial uh, expressions. So let us prove the rational root theorem. So this is how it is stated. So we have it is given actually that the root p over q is uh, is zero meaning the remainder is 0. So using uh, um, the remainder theorem, p of x, if I'm going to replace x by p over q, or the root, then the remainder must be 0. So that's the given. And if that is the given, then uh, the uh, p is a factor of a sub o. That means p can divide a sub o, and q is a factor of a sub n. That means q can divide a sub n. So that is how it is, uh, is stated in the uh, rational root theorem. So this is one, what we want to prove. So here's the proof. So we're going to start with the polynomial. So this is how it is written. A n x to the power of n. So this is in general as a polynomial. So the, the exponent is decreasing until such time that there's no more variable. And what's left is the, con the, uh, the constant, a sub o. 
and then we're going to replace p uh, the x by p over q so if we are going to replace that it, it is given that p over q is a root then the remainder is zero and then we are going to uh, remove the p of p over q so that uh, to avoid double equal signs then we're going to multiply both sides by q to the power of n so that there's no more denominator or no more fraction to see so if we're going to distribute that the q over n uh, q to the power of n will be cancelled so what uh, it looks like is like this a sub n p to the power of n because the q to the power of n is all to cancel also to the next term the bottom is q to the power of n minus 1 so if you multiply it with q to the n so we still have 1 q and q left and so on of course the uh, the right side q to the power of n times 0 is just 0 so it will not change so let us continue let's copy the last part uh, it looks like this and then we are going to transpose the a sub 0 q to the power of n to the other mm -hmm. side so instead of plus a sub 0 q to the power of n it's going to be negative a sub 0 q to the power of n next is we're going to factor out uh, p so instead of for the first term a sub n p to the n it's going to be a sub n p to the n minus 1 because 1 p is taken out as well as the second term instead of p to the n minus 1 it's, it becomes p to the n minus 2 because again 1p is taken out outside the parenthesis and um, based on this expression we can say that uh, p divides negative a sub o q to the n it's because the negative a sub o q to the n is equal to p times the whole term a sub n p to the n minus 1 and so on so as long as it's p times any number then that means the negative a sub o q to the n is divisible by p. Now, uh, we haven't proven yet uh, the, uh, the theorem because what we want to show is p divides a sub o, not p divides negative a sub o q to the n. Now, according to Euclid's lemma, uh, if a number divides, uh, meaning a number can divide uh, a product, then that means that number can divide uh, one of the factors of that product so for example here we have uh, p can divide a sub o q to the n that means it either can divide p uh, a sub o or it can divide q to the n the, those are the factors of the product a sub o q to the n so it is saying that it can either divide the a sub o or divide the q to the n but not both but it is given that p divides q to the n and if p cannot divide q to the n it this cannot be divided because it's given that it's relatively prime so you might think this is not shown in my definition for rational root theorem that they are relatively prime they are prime to each other they cannot divide with each other the p and q it is actually given but i just make the theorem more understandable and easier to uh, uh, to get so i simplify it but it's actually given that they are both they are relatively prime they cannot divide each other so that's why that cannot be uh, that is not possible the p divides q to the n now we're going to now we have proven the p that divides a sub o that means P is a factor of a sub o so let us uh, prove now that q divides a sub n so let us go back to this and let's factor out a sub n to the power of p n a uh, p a sub n p to the power of n so uh, observe that a sub o q to the n is retained we only take we only uh, transpose the negative uh, the a n p to the n that's why it becomes negative and then instead of factor, factoring out p we factor out the q so for the first term it is now 8 
n minus 1, p to the n minus 1. So the q is gone because we take out the q. So it equals this. And then with this, we can say that the q divides negative e n, p n. The same reason with the p. It's because the a n p to the power of n is in the form q times the expression a n minus 1, p n minus 1. So q times any number, that's enough to say that the a n p to the n is divisible by q. Now according to, again according to the Euclid's lemma, so that product a n p to the n, since it's divisible by q, that means it's either the a n is divisible by q or the p to the n is divisible by q. But again, these two cannot be divided because they are relatively prime. That's given in rational root theorem. And so that means the Q divides A sub N. That means A sub N is divisible by Q or Q is a factor of A sub N. And so we have proven the rational root theorem. So let's have an example. We have X cubed plus 2X squared plus X plus 2. And we're going to use the rational root theorem with this. And we want to factor this. So, of course, we're going to use the synthetic division. And what we are after is to find the number, the right number to put in the box. Because there are infinitely many numbers to put in the box in the synthetic division. And so let us label this first. This is the Q, the, the coefficient of X cubed, and the P, the, co the constant. So let us get the factors of the, the P and the Q. So the factors of 2, if you say factor, the, then all the numbers that can divide that number. So that means, of course, any number is divisible by 1, also by negative 1, and by itself, or the negative of itself. So those are the numbers that can divide 2. Now for Q, since the coefficient is only 1, so it's, it is divisible by itself or negative 1. So those are only the factors of Q and also the factors of P. There are 4, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. Now let us find the possible roots of, the, of this expression. So that means it's the P over Q. So how to do it? it you're going to pair the P and the Q. So we're going we're gonna to start with the P, which is positive 1. So it will be paired with 1 and negative 1. So it's 1 over 1, or 1 over negative 1. Next, we're going to use the P equals negative 1. So negative 1 and 1, and negative 1 and negative 1. Then the 2 and 1, and 2 and negative 1, negative 2 and 1, and negative 2 and negative 1. So we're going to pair it all. And these are the possible numbers that can be put in the box. So if we can actually simplify this, 1 divided by 1 is 1, 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1, negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1, negative divided by negative is positive, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2, negative divided by negative is positive, so it's positive 2. So all these numbers are the possible options to be put in that box so either of these numbers can give you a remainder of zero but then there are repeating numbers so let us remove those repeating numbers so the p over q is either 1 negative 1 2 or negative 2 so any of these four can give you a remainder of zero it can be more than two of these uh, numbers but for sure there is at least one of this that will give you a remainder of zero. So let us do it. So let's have an example. We have x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. And we're going to use synthetic division to find the root. So we're going to put the numerical coefficients in preparation for the synthetic division and also the line in the box where we're going to put the root. So the According to the rational root theorem, possible roots to put here are 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. So that we can have a remainder of 0. So we're going to start with 1. So let's copy the 1, the first 1. 
1 times 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 times 1 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So we have a remainder 6, that means 1 is not a root. So it is not what we are looking for. Then we're going to try the next one, which is negative 1. So let's have it. Let's copy it again. And we're going to put the negative 1. So 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 is 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. So the remainder is 2. So it is not the root that we are looking for. Now let's try the next one. So let's copy the given and uh, uh, all the things that is needed for synthetic division. And we're going to use now the next number, which is positive 2. So we have 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 2 plus 18 is 20. So that means. 2 is not the one that we are looking for. It is not part of the root. So let's try the last one, which is negative 2. Alright, so we put the negative 2. And let us put down the 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So here you go, we have uh, found the root, which is negative 2. So let us express it out. Let us factor this. So the, we're going to start with a constant 1, and then we have the next term, which is a variable x, but the numerical coefficient is 0. And the next is x squared. So we have 1x squared. Or we can write it this way, x squared plus 1, because anyway, the, the second term is just a 0x, so 0 times x is 0. So it's, you can just write x squared plus 1. So the factored form will be um, the x minus a, that's the root, x minus negative 2, the a is negative 2, times the quotient x squared plus 1. But we can write the minus negative into plus, negative times negative is positive. So x plus 2 times x squared plus 1. This is the factored form of x squared x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 2. Thanks for watching and I hope you have learned from this video. Please support my channel by pressing the subscribe button. And also write the math topics you want to learn in the comment section.